<laughs> All right, now you got them. Awesome, thank you, ma'am. Good morning, everybody. If you want to turn your video on, I'm not gonna judge you, but this way we can make sure we're fully engaged. This is a very, very important class for new agents, uh, part-time agents, agents who focus solely on buyers. You don't necessarily think that you need to do a CMA because you're not dealing with sellers. This touches all clients, right? It's very important to do your CMA, of course, for your seller, but for your buyer too, make sure that they're not overpaying for a property. They're going to ask you your, your expertise on, is this priced right? So you want to make sure that you know the basics of how to do a CMA. Okay. So a little bit about myself. If you haven't met me, I'm Kara Evelenko. I've been with Keller Williams for a year now. Um, I have been licensed in Virginia for almost four and North Carolina for almost a year. So if you've got any questions on North Carolina or, or Virginia, I'm always here and I'll, by the end of it, I'll put all my contact info in the chat so you guys can reach out to me anytime. Um, I am a mom of three girls and 10, six and two and a half. They're all nuts. My husband is active duty Navy. So I specialize with sellers, buyers, and military. So if you guys got any questions about military relocating, if you got clients coming in and out, you don't know, you know, how to answer those questions. I'm always here for, for anything. So we're going to do these monthly. So it's going to be how to do a CMA and how to search, right? So this one is going to be a, um, 101, right? So it's going to get you to where you need to go, pull the information that you need to pull, get that CMA, get it uploaded and get it to your client. And that's going to be what the hour is filled with. So I'm going to share my screen. Make sure if you've got rain access, please log into rain. Now, if you do not have rain access, pen and paper, let's write it down. But this will is I'm recording right now. So you can always go back and view this. Um, it's very, very important. Again, save it to your files um, and just for practice and review. So for this class, I'm doing my property. It's very easy. I want to start with, with easy so you guys can understand the points that you need to focus on when you are um, pulling that, that client's information first. Okay. So my house is a cookie cutter house over here in Logan's Mill behind the Greenbrier Mall. Um, we've got 180 dwellings and about five different builds. That's it. So very easy to, you know, pull and compare. And, you know, so this class will just go over what we need to focus on um, and make sure you got all the information. So you can go into your listing or go back to your buyer confidently and say, hey, this is the price that, that we need to list at. This is the price that you need to offer and rock and roll there, okay? So I'm gonna start sharing my screen. And so I've got us pulled up on rain. We can see it well, Kara. It looks good. All right, awesome. So we're gonna log in here. And go to your handy dandy products and under matrix. That's where you're gonna live, love, and breathe all of the real estate information here, okay? Let me know if if you guys want, if I'm going too fast going too slow let me know you can unmute yourself too because I do not see the chat right now so all right so we're going to start with my property it is 1904 Kelly run bit about the search engine here on rain you do not include the street road the, you don't include the suffix so it's always 1904 Kelly or 1308 Logan's Mill. Okay, so we're gonna search 1904. All right, so we've got three solds. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the most recent. So I bought this house in, when did I buy it? <laughs> 2019, <laughs> so it's the top one, okay. So we're gonna click that top one. I am a printer, right? I've got everything printed so I can highlight and mark. So if you're like me, you're gonna go down to the bottom of the page and print this bad boy, okay? Right here. 
or email it to yourself or whatever you need to do, but you do need this, this sheet, this information to help you out. All right. So everybody got that. Next, we're going to go to the taxes. You need a little bit more information than just what the MLS provides. You need to dig in a little bit deeper. So we're going to go into realist tax. This form right here, this information that you're showing right here, the owner's information, location, tax ID, that's really what you'll need that'll benefit you for your CMA information. Um, but I like to go just to have it uh, for later access, you know, realist tax. So I'm going to click on realist tax and that pulls in realist. So you can print from this page or you can launch realist. And that kind of, it prompts you to do the same thing, plug in the address and um, provides you the information. So, so if you want print this page, I've already got it printed. That way I can highlight and just locate the items that I need. Okay. Everybody good? All right, so I'm going back to the rain page. Got all the information that I need. So with this page from your listing, I'm gonna point out some key points that are gonna be really important for you guys. So obviously we're in Chesapeake. We're in the zip code 23320, all right? This second column on the top, area, subdivision, neighborhood. Those are really important because most of your values and appraisal values stay within the subdivision and your neighborhood, unless you have some crazy wacky property that, you know, there aren't any recent solds and there aren't any um, recent for sales, you wanna stay in your neighborhood, okay? So your subdivision and this, this instance, instance, the neighborhood and the subdivision is named the same, okay? So Logan's Mill. It is a detached dwelling. Okay, that, that's pretty important too. So I'm dealing with a single family home. I'm not dealing with the townhome or a condo. All right, scrolling down on the page a little bit more. I'm gonna get to the nitty gritty. You need to know the bedrooms, four bedrooms. Full and half baths. I've got th three full baths, no halves. And my approximate square foot is 1820. Okay, so 1,820 square feet of livable home. Okay, and just based off this and what you want to do is click on the pictures, okay. The property, it's in decent shape, right? As you scroll through, and this is what you're going to do for your comparables as well. Just want to glance at the property. Are we dealing with a fixer upper? Are we dealing with a full rehabbed property? Are we dealing with one that, you know, obviously it's been, you know, well taken care of but no real crazy updates that we know of before we go into our listing or um, you know, representing our buyer before we show the property. Okay, so just scroll through the pictures, gather your, your information and your, your opinions. Yes, my house still looks like this, but not this crazy carpet. <laughs> but I can tell you guys what I've done. So if you guys are following along with this Kelly Run property, we have, since then, so if I'm if I'm your client and you're meeting with me, um, over either over the phone or you know at the at your appointment, what you're going to ask is what have you done to the property, right? So so you can gather a more um, informative CMA for them that's more honed in, and so you're not comparing apples to oranges, right? So our job is to compare apples to apples, and you're going to hear everybody say that, um, and that's it hones true because a lot of we, we live in an area that, you know, a lot of the builds are the same, right? But you don't want to compare your average. This home was built in 1984. You don't want to, you want to make sure that, hey, since 84, have we done anything? You know, what is your buyer going to look for? Or what is a potential buyer really searching for in your property? Okay, so we've done siding, we've done chimneys, we've done new window, windows, excuse me, all new carpet throughout, all new paint throughout. We've done doorknobs, ceiling fans. Uh, we redid the closet upstairs. Um, we've redone the garage floor and the garage door. So those are just things that the first that we've done that I can remember as the owner that I've done. Okay, so note those things, um, you know, and make sure that when you're going through those CMA that you're noting that, right? That's very important. So everybody got their information. We all know where to find it on the MLS. 
I'm going to interject just one little interjection here while we pause. Um, first of all, in the chat, because I'm taking a look and watching it, is anybody behind or have any questions? Um, you can type it in the chat if you want to, and I can read it out loud. Yes, please. Do that for a few seconds. Okay. Um, so go ahead and, and you know utilize that if you need to while I give you a little bit of information. So I used to do um, BPOs. Those are broker price opinions, and I had to be very specific in my BPO. Now, BPOs are used by the banks, and you drive out to the home. A lot of times you can't get in. You have to do the exterior of it, um, and then you have to go back when you can get in to adjust it, all right? So the banks hire you to do these BPOs because they have to come up with a price for the home in case it's going into foreclosure. So usually when it's close to foreclosure, they send you out to do a BPO exterior and you send it into them. And then the reason you would do those is because you could potentially actually get that listing. Um, so we would be bidding for listings. So if we did a really good BPO, we would actually have a really high chance of being able to list that property for the bank when it went into foreclosure. So with doing that throughout the years, um, I did learn a lot of things. So if a home, and you can look at, um, you know, past photos of listings as well um, and, and determine certain things that may need to be updated and do some guesstimates and, and write them in. But let's say, you know, for your homes, you're going to be able to know what's in them or your client is going to be able to do a virtual tour with you, even if you can't you know, get inside the home, they can usually do a virtual tour. So I will tell you this, um, if something needs paint versus another home that is sparkling new, it's about a dollar per square foot that you would take off the price because it would need to be painted, right? Carpet is about $2 a square foot. You would take off the price if it needs carpet, all right? And then also vice versa. If your house is better than the others, it's a dollar per square foot of paint and $2 per square foot for carpet. Um, the roof, the roof itself, you can actually get estimates from different companies. Um, and I would encourage you to do this instead of me telling you the roofing prices. But the roofing prices, if you get an estimate on a square footage home, you can pretty much use that across. And then you ask the roofing companies what they charge for different pitches of the roof. So it's always good to have this information in your brain. The reason I'm not telling you about the because I use a specific um, person whenever I do it. And the roofing company that I used to use is no longer doing roofs um, due to COVID. So I cannot really tell you the pricing that I usually give people for that. You're going to have to come up with that one on your own. But, you know, go out there, get some vendors and see what those prices are and then chuck it down to square footage. OK, then for bedrooms, depending on the neighborhood, a bedroom, an extra bedroom um, would be anywhere from five to ten thousand dollars on the home. Unless you're going from two to three bedroom. It's a game changer, right? So three to four to five, that's usually about five to 10,000, depending on the area, right? The higher end areas, obviously it's gonna be 10, the lower end areas is gonna be five. But if you're going from two bedroom to a three bedroom, it's a huge game changer. That is the tipping point of a search. So if you ever have an office or anything like that, and they're using you as an office and you can utilize that as a bedroom per rain, you could actually put that into rain as a bedroom. So with a, office that does not have a closet rain does allow you to put that in as a bedroom the appraiser may or may not consider that a bedroom usually they will not so you warn your clients hey it is a you know per appraisers usually this is an office but we're allowed to put it in rain as a bedroom and then i always notate in the comments mm -hmm. third bedroom can be utilized as office no closet you know um, but you can, you can do that as long as it has a door and a, um, and windows, you can actually utilize that as a bedroom. So, um, then garages. So going from a two to a one or a two to a three, it's $10,000 per extra garage space, unless you're going from no garage to garage. So if you're doing your comps and you don't have a garage and everybody else has one, it's 25,000 just to go to a one car garage from none. 
again, if you don't have this information, you can't write it down fast enough, it's okay because we are recording it. Um, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> you know from previous brokers yeah so, yeah well so i mean a lot of people that? haven't done a lot of reos so it's yeah it's very good information um somebody did this for me in the very beginning and i was just so appreciative um Absolutely. it's the same thing uh with the differences in the type of heating so um that just hey, Tom, thomas goes... i have a question real quick before you jump into the heating you uh -huh. said going from a two to a three bedroom was a game changer because of that search threshold. So is that a 10 K or more adjustment or is that on the high side? Is, is, does that affect? So if I've got a three bedroom house versus a two bedroom house and a comparable, how much is that adjustment? Yes. It's a $25,000 adjustment for the bit for that extra third bedroom for the, yeah. So 25,000 for the low end and it's going to be 30,000 for the high end. That's huge. So it's huge. Very huge, very, very huge, very huge. But here's the thing you, that the reason I didn't give, give you a price on it is because you should never be comparing a two bedroom with a three bedroom ever. Right. I got you. That should not be an issue. But the issue would be is if you had a two bedroom with an office, you would want to put it in as a three. The chances of you comparing a two bedroom to a three bedroom, that's just lack of knowledge that people do. Don't ever do it. Find a three bedroom, compare it to a three bedroom, right? Now, you're going to have a lot of times where it's five bedroom versus six or four, you know, that's when you're going to have the most of your of your comps that you're going to have an issue. But two, don't ever compare a two bedroom to a three bedroom. Don't compare a three bedroom to a two bedroom. It's too much of a huge difference. And you're not really going to have a very good comp. You're not going to have very good ground to speak to the client or to use for the appraiser. So yeah, but Manesh you also, says you roof should be about $4 a square foot. Okay, Manesh, that's what I usually use is $4 a square foot. Very good. Um, Manesh is confirming and he has a roofer he uses consistently. He's also confirming $4 a square foot. Manesh, that's what I always did, 4 to $5 a square foot. So um, that's good. And then adjustment for the pitch, which I always did. Yeah. Um, I did a 5 to 10% adjustment for the pitch, depending on the area. Munesh, do you have an adjustment for the pitch? Is it around the same? You know, if there is a, if it is very steep, it definitely mm -hmm. would add at least like a dollar more, you know, if it's a single family, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if it's a larger single family with uh, mm -hmm. like two stories and steep pitches, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. could easily add, I'm thinking about $1.50 to $2 a square foot. Okay. I used to do percentages. I did five for, um, you know, a, a tighter pitch, but 10 for the maximum pitch. So, um, yeah. okay. So Munesh is saying, uh, and I'm going to go, I'm going to veer with him because again, I don't use this roofer anymore. So he's out there in the field and does it a lot more. Um, I'm going to go towards him on this one for sure. You All know, right, I I'm just sorry, I'm just reading. If anyone needs one, I definitely do have a good uh, roofer. Can you send one to Lucy? I know she has someone who wants one. Absolutely. Thank Can you, you drop that in the chat, Manesh? Yep. Be awesome. All right, Una says, my rain is super slow, but I'm keeping up otherwise very good. Uh, Mike says, I don't have access to realists. Do I reach out to rain to get that corrected? Yes, sir, you absolutely do. And I think that's it. Um, I can't think of any other adjustments that are most likely right now, unless anyone else wants to speak up, please. And if anyone else has an adjustment that they know of that I didn't mention, please do so. You so the big one in the room is a pool versus no pool. If a neighborhood, a lot of your comps have pools and this one doesn't. So I will tell you this, pools do not matter unless it matters to the person. Okay. So you cannot do an adjustment for a pool whenever you are doing a comp. The reason is if you have somebody who doesn't want a pool, then you have to adjust for how much it would be to take it out if the house has a pool. If you have somebody that wants a pool, you're going to have to adjust the house if it doesn't have a pool to put it in. And that's the only adjustment you can do. You cannot do a general adjustment on a pool because it's so random of who wants one and who doesn't. So there is no set for a pool. There is no set adjustment for a pool with any bank comp. Um, and then the appraisers, they're all over the place with them. Yeah. All over the place. with. The only thing I would tell you is that if you have an above ground pool, it's always usually a negative. 
I could see that. It's always Thank a negative. You. Yeah, they're always a negative. That's the only one thing with the pool that I could really tell you about, unfortunately, just because it's such a, a personal thing. Anything yeah, else? I mean, you guys I personally want to ask don't want to. I personally wouldn't want a house with a pool, but I would not see one with the pool if it meant mm -hmm. check the bills, but I wouldn't pay more for it. So I see your point in that regard. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, it's so personal. Anyone else have any questions um, or anything they want to bring up right now? I'll add to the pool thing. I've talked to lots of um, appraisers who they basically all say it depends on the neighborhood and what mm -hmm. you're looking for. Just like Thomas Dina said, it's, it's all over the place. But the maximum adjustment that they will do for one, um, like if the area has a lot of pools and this one has a pool um, or vice versa, you know, doesn't have a lot of pools and this one has one, um, the maximum adjustment is going to be $10,000 for an in-ground saltwater pool. Like they won't yeah. go more than $10,000 for it. Yeah. So make sure that when you're telling your clients, if they want to add a pool, like, cool, you're going to spend 40 grand to put it in and yeah. get maximum 10 grand out on the back end. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. yeah, maybe. All right. Uh, Celinda said, hold on, there's one more. Sorry. What about a loft? Is that considered a room? Uh, no, because it's not surrounded by walls. It's not considered a bedroom. It is considered a room, but not a bedroom. Did you want to, have, to have a door heating? and walls? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry? The types of heating. Did you want to go into that or wait? No, I was just saying, uh, just make sure that you know the pricing of the heating um and you know the neighborhood and what they have because it's really determined on the neighborhood like if the whole neighborhood you know has like there's neighborhoods that almost the whole neighborhood has city and then there's like three that have well sure. like know the different you know what I mean yeah you have to really you have to know that and then the heating you know if everybody around them has an HVAC and they have oil you know yeah and there's some of those neighborhoods that are they're kind of but for the most part most of the neighborhoods you're going to come into all have roughly about the same. It's the ones that have something different that you're really going to have to look at and adjust, you know? Um, so those are going to be on a case by case basis. And please feel free to ask me or your mentor, because we'll have to look at the neighborhood and actually see what's in there and what type of system they have and how new it is. That's the biggest one is how new it is. So if they have, if they have an older HVAC, I always tell everybody, make sure you put a home warranty on that home. Just gift them the home warranty, man, or ask for it if you're the buyer um, yeah, I've and have that done. Yeah, because that's a big, that's a, that's a huge, that's a huge issue as is those going out. So yeah. Um, any other questions before we let Karen check over? This is Shelly. I have a question about the um, adjustments for painting and carpet. Yes. Um, so if the client, like if this is a listing and they decide to go ahead and paint and replace the carpet, you no longer would need to do any adjustments, correct? Well, it depends if they're in a neighborhood where most of the paint and carpet is not updated, then yes, you would want to add to that. Okay, because they enhance yeah. it. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And usually I will tell you in this market, because it's going so fast, if it doesn't look too terrible, then I would allow for those um, for a carpet and a paint allowance so that the client can pick what color they want. Nothing's worse than having a brand new carpet and going in and have to replace it because you didn't like the color. Yep. Yes, Any other questions? That was a good question, Shelly. Any other questions? Okay, Kara. Cool beans. Back to you. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome, ma'am. Awesome. And that's the benefit of having our awesome broker, y'all. Because I was not going to touch on that because it can be all over, but you have that professional you can tell you the numbers. So make sure you wrote that down. If not, this is recorded. Please be very versed in this. So it's very, very important. Um, it's your profession. It's your job to know this. Okay. So I'm going to keep it moving forward. We've got our MLS print off and then we've got our taxes information. So at the bottom of this beautiful page that we are on still, you have the lovely CMA button. You can start here, but I'm going to show you guys the easier way. Okay. So go back up to the top, hover over search and click residential. This is where we are going to get down to, you're going to look at active. You're going to look at pending. You're going to look at solds. Okay. For this particular property. So we're gonna come over here to the left, 
Make sure active is clicked. Make sure pending is marked. Make sure sold is marked. This is a single family home. So continuing on down that column, click on detached. Okay, it's very important that you're not pulling townhomes and condos. I'm surrounded by apartments here. So I do not want any of those to count for this, okay? Next, we will hit the area, right? So we've got our area subdivision and neighborhood. Subdivision is 309 Logan's Mill. So just type it in here, the Logan's Mill. You got one, okay? Sometimes you will come across very close named neighborhoods. If you are more comfortable plugging in the subdivision number, do that. I go off of subdivision name, okay? Already down at the left, we've got six matches, all right? I'm gonna make sure, so I have a four bed, three bath, 1,820 square foot home. So come down to bedrooms and plug in the bedrooms, right? So if you're, you want spot on, you want spot on. The rule of thumb is you want three to five sold properties and three to five active if you can for your CMA, right? The more the merrier, but it needs to be the more, the more accurate, okay? So if you're having to update your search and go from, like Thomasina said, going from two to three bedrooms is huge, don't do it. So if I can't find a match for my four bedrooms, three baths, I'm gonna choose to update something else. So I'm gonna go from like three to four now I won't go to two to four bedrooms, okay? So I'm gonna go to three to four bedrooms because right now for my three, my four, three search, I've got one match, okay? So I'm gonna broaden it up. I'm gonna go from three to four bedrooms, still one. So my bathrooms are my thing, okay? So let's do two to three, let's see what we got. That bumps it back up to six, okay? Now our square footage, another rule of thumb, 200 square foot below, 200 square foot above for your range, okay? You don't wanna go any higher because then you're dealing with, because that's your square footage is your very last line item that you wanna deal with when adjusting the prices, okay? So make your life easier. We're gonna go to 600 to, just say 2000. See what we got. It bumps it to, to four matches. So maybe we'll we'll broaden it just a little bit so we have a little bit more to work with, okay? Five, sweet, all right. I'll make sure the ownership type is simple. This we have detached condos everywhere, right? So I wanna make sure it is still a single family home. Can you just go and tell them the difference in simple um, just because I think that there is a lot of new on here and they don't know condo versus if you don't mind sure your ownership type you guys so this house is ownership it's simple single family it is does not have um condo association it's not a, a co-op there's no um leasehold it's not a timeshare it's none of those right so it's um i don't even know the right right word to to say it is it a fee simple Yes. Full, complete ownership? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Is it? So it does have, you know, we have a property owners association. So it's, that's easy. That's, that, that's an HOA, but it's still, we own this property. Nobody else does. We don't share it with anybody. None of that. Okay. So, because there are detached condos off of Kempsville that look like single family homes, but again, they're condos, okay? So we just wanna make sure that we're focusing on the style of home that you are doing your CMA on. All right, and this house is not a fixer upper. And I do not wanna compare this house to any fixer uppers in the area. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it out. So fixer upper, we're gonna mark not, not a fixer upper, okay? got five matches. So let's see what we're working with. Let's check the results before we dig in and change anything else. Okay. So we've got one active. It is under contract. You see the C that means contingent it's under, it's got 
the contingency of the home inspection and because we are in the uh, homeowners association, we've got that contingency as well. And then our four solds, what you wanna do is you wanna look at the closed price, not the list price, closed price. So this one down at the bottom, I can tell you right now, cause I watch my neighborhood. Um, that is the exact same house as mine. It was listed for 320, it went for 340 because it is completely redone. Kitchen, baths, in-ground pool, you name it, it's got it. So we're gonna click on it and just glance real quick. Let's see, it's got the four, the three, a little bit more square footage and always, always check taxes on that. And then if you need to, do the square footage yourself. We're just gonna glance at these pictures real quick so you guys can see. Looks really nice. Floors have been redone, new paint, new kitchen. Right, you get the gist. And then of course, and there's the bathroom. All right, so what it does have, let me show you, is that pool. You always wanna look at a nice pool, right? So there's a pool. Okay, my house doesn't have that. But people looking at my house, this is probably a perk looking at this house in this neighborhood. So talking about pools, maybe adjust, adjust, it's up to you. Okay, so going back, when, you wanna, when you're on this page, you wanna click line results display to go back to where you were, all right? So what we're gonna do is these all kind of work for me, you know, they're not fixer uppers. Glancing at all of these pictures, you know, here's a different style, but it's in the neighborhood, right? It's a four, two and a half, about the same square footage. Okay, so we'll we'll make those adjustments when we get there, but just as we're going through, making sure that, hey, these actually, we're comparing apples to apples here, all right? So four, two and a half, 1932 square footage, okay? Click all of these. So up at the top left, check all or how whatever you wanna include on your CMA. Down here at the bottom, we've got criteria, email, print, CMA, directions, stats, export, and quick CMA. CMA right there in the middle. Click that bad boy. And this is how we start, okay? So any questions right now? Does anybody? Have any questions about the ownership, about the simple fee, or excuse me, the fee simple or the uh, condo or co-op or anything? I have a question about the listings. So you don't need um, each category like pending, expired, and sold as long as you have at least five and um, all of them together. So you do. Um, you you want to. So your your solds uh -huh. are what you know, your your CMA is, you're comparing previously sold properties for your most current, right? So you want to get as many active and as many sold as possible um, without going outside of the neighborhood, okay? So for this one, we're gonna just touch on basically how to do a CMA. I'm not gonna get into the really the nitty gritty of searching and, um, editing your search kind of thing, you know what I mean? I wanna, I wanna make sure we're touching on how to, to move through the CMA process, um, but you do want a three to five solds and shoot for three, <laughs> three actives. Um, you know, in this, just in this particular neighborhood, not many are going, but you'll see any other neighborhood that you pull up, you, you can get from anywhere to three to eight, you know, active listings right now, just because of the market. So you do want those. Pendings, you want to check up on those. So pendings, you can't really count on because you don't know if they're going to close. So you can have them on there, but I mean, I wouldn't necessarily bring those into your value unless you have reached out to that listing agent and said, hey, what's the deal? Get as much information from them as you can. Are we going to close with this one, you know? and kind of pick their brain until they cave and tell you, hey, yes, we've agreed on this price and we are closing tomorrow, you know, or whatever the case yeah, may be. I agree that the, uh, I always use the sold only for my pricing. 
And then the active and the pending I have for information because you will always go to your listing appointment and they will say, but Samantha yeah. down the street has her house or so-and-so has it under contract for blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So you want that information so that you know and you're not caught off guard mm -hmm. and you're going to do your research on it so you can answer right. those questions right. correctly such as, yeah, unfortunately that house has this, or I spoke to the agent and they're allowing this allowance, but the, the pricing, I always go off the sold because that's the true price that sold for that amount, the okay. pending and the active that price could change. Okay. Um, and the, and the appraiser, he's going to go off the sold. He's yep. going to go off the sold. So, sold is gold. Yes. Jordan says, look at Joe. Yes. Sold is gold. <laughs> and we have a couple more. So I'm just going to chime in here. Homes in foreclosure have the same pricing process. All homes have the same pricing process, Leticia. Um, it's, it's what the actual um, condition of the home is that would, that would vary. So um, an appraiser would not consider just because something was in foreclosure a different pricing um, process than what is not. They would consider the condition of the home. If they do, they've went against their code. So they should not be doing that. An appraiser should not be doing that. And that's who you really need to care about is that appraiser, if it's going to appraise correctly in this market because things are going so high. So you don't wanna price something so high that the appraiser comes in and says, eh, nah, it's not worth that. We're really looking to get you as close to that appraised price as possible. A lot of high-end properties, right now it might even be a good idea to talk to them about getting a pre um appraised uh price having the appraiser come out there and look at it and then you know exactly where you can start just because you don't want to waste anyone's time on that for sure yes, and then christine says three to five of each and stay in the three mile area if not in the same neighborhood correct 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 all right that's yeah. all the uh, questions i see there kara awesome all right, this is your, your money right here. Once you get to this page, if you don't have your client's information already uploaded, create your client right here. So that way they can populate under the dropdown. I'm my own client, so I'm already in here. So I'm gonna select me, wherever I am. What's my last name, y'all? <laughs> oh, just pass me just to have something plugged in so you guys can see. Okay, so always have your client's name displayed. This is for them. You can present this to them, email this to them, however they want. This is a very good tool for you guys to use for your ads and getting in front of, of more people, right? Nobody wants to, to really meet in person right now. So if you're doing a Zoom, get on a Zoom meeting and say, hey, check your email, you have that CMA, let's go over it together, right? And they have it. So start page, plug your client in, go to the next page, it's marked pages. This is what you will want included in your CMA. So if you hover over the plus tabs, it's, you know, if you click on cover, all of the items underneath this category are gonna be included in your selected pages, okay? So if you only want the cover sheet or a cover sheet with the photo, um, click on that your subjects and uh, adjustment summary or price adjustments, comparables, however you want to present your comparables, right? If you've got somebody that is a numbers person and they wanna see it all, include it all. It's not gonna hurt, you know? So there's a, a brief, there's the pro report, there's all the pictures from all the properties that you're gonna include. So if somebody wants to be that deep into it, provide it, okay? Always include your pricing recommendation. Of course, your list price and sales price chart, days on the market chart. It's just, right, knowledge is power. Provide all the information that you can, okay? Um, comparables for rentals. There also is that option here as well. If, if you have an investor and he's like, well, what are, we, what are we looking as far as rentals and what's the market like and what's this one going for? You know, provide that as well. Provide it all as much as you can. That's what we're here for. On your statistics, provide that too. What are the effect of overpricing? You know, these are little blurbs that you can include in your CMA to remind your client, um, you know, just the importance of one, using an agent, two, using you, you know, your knowledge and how much you're providing them, you know, these, and this is theirs too, right? So they keep the CMA and they're going to see 
okay, well, they're going to go back. And if they're shopping, if they're shopping agents, right, they're going to go back and say, okay, well, what did, what did Thomasina provide me? And what did Shelly provide me? And what did Lily provide me? Right. So we're going to have all those and provide as much as you want, you know, and then your map people, if you've got a visual person, provide that CMA map. That way it shows you property and all your comparables and where they're at on the map. Okay. So whatever you want to include, I'm actually going to include that one because I haven't. Um, click it and it goes right over to your selected pages. And these arrows over here, you can move where that specific page shows up in your CMA. Okay. So if you want your price and recommendation to be the very last page, or if you want it to be the very first page, however you want your CMA to lay out, this is where you do it. All right. We are going to go to the next tab. So your subject. This is where your tax sheet will come into play. So what you want to do is you want to provide as much info as possible. Okay, so this is my tax sheet that I printed off from Realist. All the information, homeowner's information, tax ID, all that jazz, right? And you want to make sure that this information matches your MLS and any history on the property, right? Because we could be dealing with a property that's 100 years old and they started with a three bedroom, but then they've added to it. And now there's five bedrooms and now your tax, your square footage is off. So you wanna make sure that you're doing your research and you're providing the most accurate information to your client and to the public, okay? So uh, we're gonna do enter across, we're gonna do the tax number. So your tax number on your real list is under tax information, it's called tax ID. So we're gonna plug it in here. Go to eight, three, zero, zero. Five zero 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 three three zero and fill. And that's going to generate everything that has been plugged in under that tax ID number. And actually, I don't like this. It doesn't didn't include a lot of the information that I wanted to put in. So I'm actually going to go back And I'm gonna put in the MLS number. So you, whatever MLS you have printed from previous sold, go up here at the top and let your MLS number. Plug in that number and it's gonna generate these photos and all this information. Okay, so let's plug in that. So 102.32.191. There we go. So all the information that I saw when I was buying the property is gonna be here. And you can adjust it, you can clear out this photo, you can put a better picture in a more updated picture, uh, whatever you can find. If they, that has been provided to you in your conversations with this client, or if you find one on Zillow or wherever, you can adjust any of these items, right? Like as we were talking about, if it has was a four bedroom and now it's a five, adjust that, okay? So adjust the remarks if you'd like. So anything in here, this is what's going to show up on your cover page, on your second page. So your cover page is the next page. This is your subject cover photo, right? It's going to appear. And then your information, however you want your information to be displayed, will be here. You can edit your information or override it. So when you plug in your info for rain and you're doing your account, you're plugging in all the information that you want seen. So make sure all that is how you want it displayed. And then your contact info, this is your seller's info. So not to, not to confuse anybody. Seller. Okay. Everybody cool? I'll check the chat for you real quick. Anyone in the chat? I don't have anything in the chat right now. If you can keep going. Awesome. Now your comparables. All this awesome information that Thomasina just provided us, this is where you're going to use it. So these items that are showing up already, this is what will appear on my CMA. If you come across an additional CMA, or excuse me, um, property that was sold, and you want to add it here, you add from the listings, right? But all of these are selected already. You don't need to select them again. They're already going to be included. Okay. So I do want to use all these. So I'm going to continue. 
take a look at my map, see how that displays. And these are all walking distance. So we're close enough. <laughs> if anybody needs my address, you have it now. Cool. So property, active, red is sold. Okay. Onto the adjustments. Oh, adjustments. Okay, so talking about bedrooms, right? Look, mine already provided, it populates 5,000, the difference. Okay, so if we're White Rock at 1905 White Rock Bend, that's a three bed. So it's gonna adjust the difference. I have three full baths. I don't have a half. And a lot of these have two. So I'm gonna adjust there. That's another five grand. Correct me if I'm wrong, Thomasina. That's just what I've been told. Okay. You would have to repeat that. My phone was ringing at the same time. Oh, you're fine. Uh, just, I was gonna say, correct me if I'm wrong on, on any of these values. It's just, just what. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm keep going. You're okay. Okay. Yeah, you're so, and then your half baths, half it. I don't have a half. Okay. Some people might need a half. So adjust those accordingly. And then just scroll through, right? And then as you adjust, you'll see at the very bottom, the low points, right? And your adjusted price. So as we're adjusting it, these numbers will change for you. All right, and just scroll through your central air and heat, heat pump, all built in the eighties, all got dishwashers and all the jazz, right? So you wanna take your time at this point to really go through each line item, you know, and make sure that they compare as much as possible because you wanna be as close as possible, okay? And lucky us, we all have garages, so <laughs> that's good. But any adjustment that you need to make should show up in this box. One second, let me close my window. That the lovely uh, lawn people blowing leaves. Here we go. So you guys see where we do our adjustments, right? And if you have any questions about how to adjust it and if it's just not working for you, let us know. Um, if you guys are on rain right now and you're doing this, just give me a thumbs up or a, yes, it's working. I got it, I, I figured it out kind of thing. So what I don't want you guys to do is continue forward and you struggle with this part. So say you do want, and here's an example, if you do want to adjust these parts, um, so we'll scroll over to square footage, right? So square footage and acreage, you can not adjust these. So say, my property does have waterfront. I got this little water over here. None of these other ones do. Will that matter? Thomasina, you want to chime in on that? Or Jordan, what are you guys, what are your guys' opinions on, on the waterfront? So waterfront um, is depending. I'll let Thomasina go first. <clears throat> so if you're in a neighborhood that they like okay so my neighborhood mm -hmm. it has the internal is not waterfront the external is waterfront right so if you're looking right. in a neighborhood that is predominantly waterfront it mm -hmm. really does matter and the way that i calculate that i don't have a direct calculation such as um oh it's this amount or that amount right. i literally look at the same homes in the neighborhood that do not have waterfront and the ones that do and compare the solds. So that's how I get my adjustment for that neighborhood. Cause some neighborhoods, it matters a lot and other neighborhoods, it doesn't. In mine, it matters a lot. So they have, you know, like 80% of my neighborhood is waterfront. Now there's other ones that only have like a pond in the backyard or just a little lake. And so like only 20% of those are waterfront and it doesn't matter as much, right? Because it's not really, it's waterfront, but you can still see the house across the way. It's not real big. You know, it just depends on the type of waterfront. Now, if you're speaking of uh, one with deep water access compared to not oh, yeah. deep water access, now that's a big deal. That's a huge deal. So it just depends on the type. And you're going to have to go in that neighborhood and look at the ones because every neighborhood has homes that aren't and homes that are. There's very, there's a few, but there's very rare a neighborhood that has all waterfront. Yeah. Very rare. There are a few, but very rare. 
Um, Jordan, you can go next if you'd like, and Munesh and Nikita, feel free to chime in as well. I was going to say, you know, very, very similar. It depends on the sort of water that you have. So like in Carrie's neighborhood, there's a little bit of a better view because mm -hmm. she's got the water, um, whether it's a man-made pond or, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, so I would give a little bit of an adjustment there, but not nearly as much as if it was deep water access or if it was beachfront, because that yeah. water is completely different. I've seen a hundred thousand dollar price difference from across the street, literally from waterfront on Chicks Beach to across the street, across Shore Drive, there's a hundred thousand dollar price difference. Um, so I'd say anywhere, you know, it really just depends and what sort of access do you have, like Thomas even touched on. Is it deep water? Is there a dock? Is it navigable? Is it mm -hmm. um, water sports, like non-motorized water sports only? Or can you have motorized water sports? Can you have a boat? What does it all look like? And just like- and don't said, take the, the owner's word for it. Make sure you know what, what is allowed, what's not allowed, and what type of access it is. Don't take the owner's word for it. And always, 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 always make sure that if you have a dock that you push to have the dock- um, um, Inspected. looked at yeah yeah I was trying to think I mean, there's like it's not like a deck inspector but there's people that will inspect the dock so make sure that you have it inspected and then also on top of that anytime that there is water access I always push to have um, a survey because it's really hard to tell where that water access how far it goes up that they actually own because there are water rights there um, for instance my neighbor um, two down she purchased this, this home and she's the second person and the neighbor in between us, who is just not the nicest person in the world. When right after she purchased it, the neighbor walked over, knocked on the door and said, you have to move your dock. And she said, why do I have to move my dock? She said, well, I like the person that was here before and I knew them and I was fine with it, but I don't know you and you need to move your dock. It's on my water. Oh, and you would never, it was literally right directly in the back of her house, but because her water rights went diagonal to the left, one little edge of that dock was on her water. Oh, gosh. So, yeah, I would always highly suggest a survey. I suggest survey anytime. I've oh, always yeah. had a survey every time I've ever bought it. But I would highly, highly, highly suggest it. And please tell that story um, so that they understand that it's super important because you never know who you're moving next to. And you never know on that waterway where those lines actually diagonally go. And there's nothing that can really tell you that except for a survey. That's right. Very valid point. I say always push that survey because yes. you just don't know. You can't assume. You can't go mm -hmm. off of, of um, you know, a drone shot of somebody doing yeah. that. You just don't know, especially with waterways and water access. And, uh -uh. Yeah, nope. absolutely. You, you also can't trust fences, but that's a whole other thing. What's that, Jordan? You can't trust fences either. No, <laughs> no. If you guys want a great example, look at my property. <laughs> My, the lines of my property are, are crazy. I don't even know that it, it could probably extend more, but I didn't get a survey. So that's on me, you know? So moving right along. So these are all your adjustment spots. Again, adjust accordingly. Um, once you are done here, we will go to pricing. So this breaks it down, right? So your comparable price and your adjusted Comparable prices all are here. Obviously, we talked about that that high, that 340. We saw what that bad boy looked like. But your average through and through 309. And knowing what I've done, what I told you guys, whatever knowledge that you have on that property, you know, adjust accordingly. But your additional analysis, this is based off of, you know, the statistics that you've plugged in, you know, that have all the information on those listings that you've included and your suggested list price. I'd leave that blank until you move, until you get that, that listing appointment and you're in front of your seller and you guys are talking about what they've done and what they're willing to do, you know, kind of thing. So, and what they've got planned, like I've, I've got a listing coming up tomorrow that we're waiting on siding and windows. He's already done the roof, right? So I'm going to price it accordingly to the new windows and new siding. Okay. So leave that blank, chat with your client, come up with, you know, they've got the numbers in front of them, right? Your low, medium, average, high. So give me your input. What would you guys price the home at? Oh, 
question go on somebody type it in the chat i want to let's let's see even if you're wrong it's okay it's all right let's type yeah. it in the chat because then we're going to know what we need to adjust to help you understand it so type in the chat what you would price this home please because this is what you guys need to be good at if anyone Everyone type it in the chat mike type it in the chat i know you're you're going to type it. so linda said 290 okay mike Shelly said 310, Nikita said 300. I'm assuming Munesh also said 300. <laughs> <laughs> Christy. Esther, Letitia, Lily, Miranda, Shelly, Una. I know those are all the people I saw in here earlier. Hopefully they're all still in here. It's okay, it's okay if it's wrong. Honestly, it's totally okay. This okay. is where you're going to be able to, we're going to see um, what we need to adjust with it. Lily said 300. Letitia said 299. Letitia, we're going to have to review the beginning of this video. I'm going to send it to you. There was a super important message from me on um, pricing uh, with the 99s. So when I send this out, just listen to the very first beginning of it, the story in the beginning at 10 at 10 a.m. I'm a Cena, don't um, I don't think I was recording that part. Huh? Oh, that. you weren't? It, oh, it should have automatically started recording when you started it. Did you stop it? I did. Because I was ah. early. My bad. I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, just leave it. Just let it run next time. Oh, you didn't record yeah. that? Okay. Well, Lily and okay. I were talking about kids and stuff, so. Okay. That's okay, because Letitia has Jordan as a mentor, and Jordan can give her my story. Yes. Um. Yeah. All right. I think that's about Una 305. Okay. Okay, Joe, where's yours? I don't have Joe. I'm here. Okay, Joe and Kara, go ahead and Kara, you tell them uh, it's your home, so you go ahead into it. And um, Joe, you could reiterate anything that she misses out on it. So with everything that I've done so far, right, there's lots of plans before we sell, right? I'm not, and I didn't disclose that to you guys because um, that hasn't happened yet. Don't know if it's going to. Um, mm -hmm. based on, so that 340, right? That was my cookie cutter. They've got the in-ground pool. They've got mm -hmm. everything updated, kitchens and baths. My house doesn't have that. So I'm mm -hmm. automatically going to be deducting at least 25 grand from that, from that 340, right? Mm -hmm. Just doesn't mm -hmm. compare. So mm -hmm. I'm looking at between 305, 310, maybe 315, you know, but that's me digging into it more. Um, you know, cause we've done all the things that we've done, right. You know, but mm -hmm. we don't, again, the things that we don't have compared to the things that we do, you know, we've got the square footage, we've got the space. Um, so you guys are, you guys are pretty cool. You guys are right there. You guys are right there. Yeah. Um, with your, with your, so that's pretty good guys. Congratulations on that. You guys are right there. Um, Joe, do you have anything to add? What's your input, um, I was right there with Kara, you know, thinking probably around the 310 mark. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sorry, phone call. Um, <laughs> um, but you know, right around the 310 mark because of the pool, the updates, the moving ability, um, everything was ready. You know, I think in order to get to that mark, you know, Carrie, you know what we have to do. We have to neutralize everything because Absolutely. you're living there right now and you're not neutralizing things, you're living there. Yeah. Um, and you got three girls. Yep. So well, my house doesn't you know, look like that, by the way. <laughs> so you know, that's what you go into with your clients too, is, you know, you're yeah. living here right now. And this is why I tell people meet with me as soon as you think about selling, like as soon as it's in an idea in your head, meet with me so we can go over because so many people want to do stuff to their house. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Um, so I would just say, you know, Kara's house, when she's ready to sell, it'll be, if she were to be ready to sell right now, I feel totally comfortable putting on the market at 310. Yep. No problem at all. Um, but just when you're getting okay. ready to talk with people, like make sure that they're talking with you before they're ready to list. That way you can tell them what they actually need to do. Yeah. What they need to get your house ready to list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would tell Kara, if Kara was my client, I would tell Kara, Kara, I want you to box things up. I want you to put it in storage. I want you to neutralize the 
um, the walls in this and I want to see what it looks like, you know, um, completely blank. I want to go ahead and put this on the market. Um, I don't want to wait for all of that because the market is so hot right now. And me personally, I'm going to go 5,000 higher than what Kara was stating. So the reason is, is because right now I know the market is going over asking price mm -hmm. and I don't want to go so high that it wouldn't be negotiable if it didn't appraise. But I feel in my expertise with the market right now that 5,000 is very negotiable. And I also think somebody would pay 5,000 out of pocket to be in the area that she's in as well. So mm -hmm. I actually so would go with, with the 315 or 320, depending on after I walked through the house and saw different things um, is what I would go with just because of the market. If the market wasn't the way it is, I would probably go at 310. Now, if at any time in the next seven days, we do not receive an offer or, or have any interest, what would I do, Kara? Talk about production. Yes. And it well, wouldn't be a surprise to Kara because when I listed this, I would have told Kara, if we don't have anything in seven days, we're going to reduce this by $5,000 or we're going to continue that until we get something um, in writing that we're going to ratify. And the reason is, is because I don't want to waste your time. Trust me, I'm an agent and I want the most commission, right? So I want the highest amount. I would like to sell your home for 400000 but I can't price it that way because the market cannot hold it. So trust me, I get paid more when it's higher. I'm not reducing this for anything other than we need to sell it for you. And we need to sell it quick because you don't have the time. Sure. So, um, you know, that's, that's what I would do. I'm a more aggressive listing agent than most. Just know that. Um, Joe is the least aggressive listing agent that I know of, but still aggressive. And Kara is just a little bit below me, but I'm super aggressive when it comes to myself. Like I literally have them sign the reduction before I ever leave um, with not, you know, not dated. So it's, it's, I'm a little bit more aggressive. So now you've had three different styles of it. You've had the low, the medium and the high aggressive, and you can kind of choose which way you would like to do it. But we're all within 10 to $15,000 of each other uh, for the price. Yeah. Uh, Nikki said, the reason I said 300 is so you can be at that sweet spot and get over asking and probably no closing cost assistance. Agreed. Agreed. There's all different techniques of how you want to address it with your client. You're, we're all within ten, fifteen thousand $15,000 of each other. So um, it's just how that client is going to respond to that. Because even if you price it a little low, it'll get into a bidding war right now with the uh, market the way it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, all of these are right answers, though. As long as you were over uh, the, you know, three and over, you guys, you guys did really well. We had a little bit low on some, but if you would have looked at it in person, I feel like you would have added a little bit more to it for those that just were a little low. Um, yeah. We're right around yeah. the same area, same sweet spot. So I'm super appreciative of that. You guys really listened and paid attention, and that's that's awesome. Um, do you guys have any other questions? We're a little bit over because we had lots of stories, but do you guys have any questions for Kara or anything before she finishes out? This is Shelly. I just wanted to clarify um, the, on the adjustments. So yes, for the, um, the half bath to full bath, I know initially mm -hmm. we had said 5K for a half versus full. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's less, so if your property has three and the others had the two and a half, we divide it in half. We just split it. Yeah, I, I, if, I your property, if your property has three full and the other property has two and a half. Yeah. I do three, 3,000. Okay, so just don't do the full five unless there's an additional whole bathroom. That's right. Yeah, okay, gotcha. absolutely. Yep. Good Any question. other questions, guys, or any input or feedback or anything like that that you'd like Martin, to give? As long as you guys can navigate this, you will, mm -hmm. you'll find, you know, you're going to, you can get different results with different searches, right? So if any of this confuses you, just contact your mentor, call me. Um, you know, let me know what's confusing you or what you're struggling with and we can figure it out. Don't, don't try and, and beat yourself up over this and, and sit in front of this for hours to try and figure it out. Like, let someone help you to be successful with this. Right. So let's clear the air there and then get you moving forward. Um, and a bigger point is the reason why I picked my house, because my house doesn't look like this anymore. So if you were listening, I've done paint and I've done all kinds of stuff. So those of you that are listening, um, I price it over 300,000. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, when um, I bought this house, it was like, oh my God, I got to put so much money into it, you know, and we did. And so you're going to have those clients that are like, look, this is what it used to look like, but this is what it looks like now. And if you can hone that in and you can really bring that 
put it on paper before you're even there, you're going to impress your clients. You really are, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt of, Hey, okay, you're telling me the truth. And then when you get there, you can justify that price. So uh, um, one more question I have for everybody is, can you, cause we're going to have these monthly and obviously you guys have seen this one and people can go back and um, they're able to watch this. So since you are a first class, we're going to ask the question of what other items would you like to see in these CMA classes? Please Absolutely. put it in the chat. We have a lot of things that we're going to cover anyway, but put it in the yeah. chat of items that you would like for us to go over in these CMA classes and these pricing classes. Um, put some ideas in there or things that you just don't you know, really understand, put it in there so that we can add it to the classes futuristically. Yeah. And then uh, while you guys are doing that, I'm just going to ask Lucy, Lucy, is there anything you would like to say? Because you are on here. I don't know if there's anything you would like to say from a compliance standpoint of anything that we went over. No, just just be sure you've you've done your research and you don't have to go this in depth with the CMA on the buyer's side, but you need to know the numbers in the neighborhood when you're writing offers for your buyers so that you're not offering too much or too little. You don't want to intentionally put yourself in a position to have to renegotiate after an appraisal. If, if you know that that house that's listed at 425 based on your numbers can't possibly appraise for more than 350, you know, you, you've got it. That's a huge gap that nobody's going to come down on and you're going to have conflicting and combative discussions the seller's not going to like that so you yeah. just you just need to really be aware of the numbers and be prepared for whatever may come with it that's right yes ma'am thank you for saying that because i think the next ones the the months to come for more of these trainings we will really focus we'll, we'll switch gears and focus on the cma for the buyer because it does entail you know a little bit less um mm -hmm. but it's it's very important that you guys do those CMAs for your clients because you can't just be like, yeah, that's a great price, offer it. You know, and then we get to like Lucy said, we get to the appraisal part and you're like, whoa, we're 20,000 apart. Like yeah. you should have known that from the jump, right? So we're gonna guide you. We're gonna, you know, train you guys on, on being that professional for both your sellers and your buyers. Um, I do wanna say, please give us all of your input, but remember we're not appraisers. So the points that we're giving you, um, and for luckily we've got our, our lovely broker who's got all the knowledge anyway, um, you know, she'll be able to tell you what is a market enhancer, what is a market driver, and those are things that appraisers go off of, right? So it's the square footage, it's the bedrooms, it's, um, you know, the bathrooms and waterfront and all that stuff, right? Um, if you, but we're not appraisers. Yeah. I mean, that's the bottom. Appraisers. We're really not. You know, and if you yeah. ask the appraiser, they're not going to give you the right answer anyway, because they're yeah. there. <laughs> it's not the right answer they're not going to give you what you're looking for they're going to guide you yeah. how they've been trained you know just do your do your best and that's what we're here for so i yeah, and make sure that you always have um your mentor look over all your paperwork before you submit it um don't end up with a ratified contract that your um, mentor did not look over and now all of a sudden you just got your buyer into a pickle Make sure your mentor is looking over all of your paperwork, including your comps, so that they know exactly what's going on. Um, and then make sure that during this downtime, if you don't have any listings, you should still be viewing listings. A lot of listings out there that are vacant, go show. Go out there, start viewing them. You can even video yourself, you know, showing the property. If the other person would love it, but you can video yourself showing the property, get it out there, put it on your Facebook, make it look like you're out there seeing properties and go and take a look and, and take your family, um, like your, your husband or take your brother, take one person and show them the property, right? Show them the property, practice on them, get comfortable with that. Go with your mentors, contact other mentors, see when they are going to be going out. Um, we're going to be putting a Facebook together just for mentees if you'd like to join it because I feel like I'm constantly texting y'all and um, you know, trying to keep you updated because you're not always on our, our text strings yet because you're waiting on a license. So we're going to have a mentor page. I've been working on that for two days now where you guys are going to be able to go there and see all this stuff. Um, make sure that you, you're you contacting everybody to, to get involved as much as you can. Um, the chat, Shelly said, new construction in an old neighborhood, very good. Or new construction beside of an old neighborhood. Yeah. That's a good That's one, Shelly. Very on good. Yeah, we're going to hit on all those points down the road. Yeah. Um, if any of you guys have any of these situations pop up before then, call us, you know, yeah, absolutely, we'll absolutely more than happy. Or call to them. Sorry. <laughs> this is where I fall. I always say, yes, I'll talk to you. And then I end up taking the call and I put them out of a job. So yes, call your mentors. Don't call me, call them. 
Uh, and then last thing, final page here on your CMA. Sorry, going back to the shared. Just view your CMA before you send it to anybody, please. So if there's any adjustments, view it and then, or email it to yourself, print it, however you want to do it. But always, always, always view it before you send it to your client. <laughs> so yes, always view it. And then Christy said, don't be scared to call other agent about their listing that are on the market. Or I'm sorry, Christine said it. Um, don't be scared to call other agents about their listings that are on the market and go see other properties. Yes, agree, Christine. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. This class yep. wrap up, utilize this. This can be a Facebook post, a boost, an ad. Let me do a CMA for you. Do you, you know, do you, uh, people are sitting there wondering what their house is worth. Do this for them. All the Absolutely. Get this in front of as many people as you want, you know, as you like, all your mm -hmm. family people you don't know if you're running ads you know run that to a landing page to to your website and it'll generate yep. that, this is, this a, good is script. A, great, a, a super touch point for the beginning of the year is let me give you an update on the market in your neighborhood yep. yeah. let me provide you with a cma and then you finalize that with and who else can i help with this information right. and you start yep. getting the things rolling it's an absolute it's a warm touch you're, there's yeah. no you can do a, you can do a neighborhood highlight do a video with your phone neighborhood highlight drive through the neighborhood be able to um, do videos with the neighborhood attach a few comps to the video put it on your Facebook you can boost it and you can touch people in that neighborhood you literally can synchronize it down to touch people in the neighborhood and surrounding neighborhoods of um, what you did for your neighborhood highlight then put it on your Instagram then add it to your pages like there's so many things you can do that right now that's helping you practice but can also help you with marketing as well do neighborhood highlights consistently at all times and Kara just put her info also in the chat in case you need it and Joe if you want to put your info in there in case um, anyone else needs it um, yeah. those it's are two of the three mentors practice this guys we can't emphasize that enough this is your bread yeah. and butter this gets you in front of more clients professionally and build your confidence too as new agents. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what I'm talking about, but it looks like I, I know what I'm talking about. So, and that's the first step. <laughs> yeah. So, and use this as a work. script when you call people, you know, just like Lucy said, and give them a call and door knock, have, have packets ready with CMAs in it for the neighborhood of what is selling, what hasn't sold, what's good, yeah, some impressive. good advice, leave so, it with them, yes. do some door knocking. Yes. It's really good guys. Yeah. Really good. All right. We did take you over, but we gave you some good info. So I hope you can appreciate it. Um, and as always, you never have to stay and we always record. So we will be sending this out. Love you all dearly. And I will be seeing you around Kara. I love you to pieces. Thank you so much for doing love this you. and I will see you soon. Bye guys. Bye.